Welcome back. This is the third in the series of uh, Microsoft Access videos. Today what we want to talk about is tables. How to build them, what they're for, how to, how to use them. Because a table isn't just a table. You know, a table is a set of rows and columns. Uh, the columns being fields, different uh, types of data as you go across. You know, like the first name, last name, address, those type of fields. And then you have the rows, which are meant to be the different records within the table. But tables perform about three different functions in a database. The first function is that they are objects. So let me just bring up a database here. I just pulled the canned asset database that is with Microsoft Access. And you can see over here for tables, they have assets and contacts. Those are what they would refer to as object tables or tables that contain subject matter. So assets being hard assets that are owned by their contacts, for example, in this database. If we also look at another database, and this one is um, one that has just tables in it for now, but it, it's instructive because really beyond the object tables, the object table would be like authors and attachments and books. All of those are subjects, customers, contacts, there is also another thing there's transactions which would be book orders so as customers order books and you then are recording those transactions they would go in a transaction table and then there's a thing called a join table or a switch table as it sometimes is referred to and and here's one up here author book and if we look at the, a little bit of the contents, you notice that all it has is IDs. In other words, an author can write several books and a book can have several authors. So what you have is a many-to-many -many relationship and a data, database can't model a many-to-many -many relationship, just one table to another. It has to have an intermediary step in here where you can then say that an author has several books. Like for example, this author number one has these two, these two books. Actually, book one here has two authors in this case. So, and then this author has a second book. So book author one has this second book here, while this book one has these two authors. So by having a many-to-many -many relationship, you have to have what they call a join table. And so you've got object tables, you've got transaction tables, and you have join tables, those three, okay? Now, notice there's a naming convention. Uh, when you name a table, a lot of times when you're looking at objects, you can't see what the kind of object is except by the name of itself. Like when you're in the VBA coding uh, you, and you wanna pick up a table instead of a query, you'll notice that in this case, TBL is the nomenclature for tables, okay? Now notice in this uh, canned database over here, they didn't use any sort of formatting. Bad on Microsoft, okay? This is the one that came, comes with Access. Uh, it's the asset database for Access. And so they just gave it real names here. Whereas the, uh, the convention really is to follow the beginning with TBL for a table. And for example, form would be FRM and then the name of the form. Notice also that they're not letting spaces be involved in here and the underscore uh, complete on all of these. That's just something that they used when they, um, when they made this particular database. But you can see no spaces, TBL in front. Query would be QRY, forms, FRM, macros, MCR, or any other uh, consistent um, naming convention that you should and need to apply. So let's say we want to create a new table. What I want to do is I'm going to put this table in design view. Actually, let's get a table that has a few more fields in it. Um, and the, let's say the context table. I'm going to put that in design view up here. And notice in design view, you have the field name here. So that first column, the data type here, 
And if you want to put a description information there, that you certainly can. And the description can um, the description is good because when you go do the uh, database documentation that I showed you in an earlier film, um, this these descriptions end up in the database documentation. So you can cause the database to self-document if you put descriptions in, in each location. Do notice that it says optional up here. To have a description is not critical for the running of the database in, in any stretch. Now, this data type here, they listed as an auto number. But if you look down here, the field size is a long integer. So while it's an auto number data type, meaning it's a special form of a long integer, it auto increments. So any new value that comes up, it increments from the old value and goes straight forward. Um, now, auto numbers have a unique property in the respect that you can't put an auto number field on an existing table or change a long integer ID field, for example, into an auto number that already has values in it. It just won't let you. It'll let you add an auto number field to an existing table, but it won't let you convert to uh, an auto number field for an existing field when you've already put data in the database, okay? Now, the ID field by just by its nature is indexed. So it says, yes, it's indexed and no duplicates, okay? And down here, you also see that there's format here the kind of format that you want here. And there's several canned formats that you can use, percent, scientific notation, and so forth. You can put a caption in here. So it lay, it puts a label for the field when you, when you create a view. Now author ID has number here. So different from the auto number, this is just a number where you specify down here the type of number it is whether it's a byte length number or an integer length or long integer or single precision decimal or double precision decimal, replication ID or decimal, okay? Various different types. And we'll get into those specific definitions uh, a bit later on for the data types, okay? Now, over here is a property sheet. The property sheet lets you set various other items. Like for example, if I have an auto number and I have it set as a long integer, I can go over here and uh, put in a description here, or I can put in a validation rule that the number has to be between one value and another value. I can put in the validation text so that when it gives an error, it gives information as to what the uh, validation rule really says. Um, if you want to filter this table when it loads, you can do that and then put uh, ordering it uh, on load, for example. Uh, so you can order it and it'll order from the top to the bottom. So in this case, it'll order by author book ID. Um, but if you had another field at the top, you would be able to sort it by a different method. So the property sheet becomes very important as well. Now, if I wanted to move one of these fields around is it's relatively simple it's very much like moving a field that you would in excel and grab the record selector here and move it i don't even have to put it with no spaces here or i can move it in between there if i need to insert like i want to insert i can hit the insert key so i'm hitting the insert key on the keyboard and it'll open it up like that or if i want to delete a particular field I could do so just by highlighting it with the record selector and hitting delete. And it'll ask me, do you want to permanently delete the selected fields? At this point, I want to say no. In fact, I'm not going to save the changes that I did here. So in this particular video, what you want to take from it is that tables have three different types. There are object tables, which are by subject, like a, a name or an author or books or various different type of data in a particular table. The second thing is that it can be a an index table or a switch table, okay? In other words, when you have a many-to-many -many relationship, it's the table that resides, resides in the middle to tell which many on the other side 
um, the one belongs to. So you can have many on either side of the join, and we'll get into joins a bit later. And then you have a transaction table. So if you've got an order entry system or information being added to it in a form, uh, the transaction table will be able to hold those transactions and report on those transactions later. Then in building a table, you have this interface here where you can choose the data type, choose the field name, and t tell whether it's going to be indexed or not indexed or you know all what you it tells you what you can do with each individual element in the database okay so that's really all i have on tables at this point we will get even more refined on tables and more detailed on tables as we as we go further because there's there's much more to learn about tables um but i want to teach teach you those things when we have an application for it so thank you for joining me. Uh, please subscribe to the channel and you can get notified of uh, various different uh, videos that come out, uh, not only on the subject of access, but on a lot of other subjects that I teach. Thank you. We'll talk to you later.